Hi friends, this is the continuation of the lecture of anterior compartment of leg. In the previous lecture, I have explained about the nerve supply in superficial fascia and deep fascia and extensors or deep fascia that is extensor retinaculum, superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum. All of these have been explained. Now, if you come to the anterior compartment as such clearly, so the anterior compartment of leg is this one the this is tibia this is fibula this is the interosseous membrane this is anterior intermuscular septum anterior intermuscular septum this is posterior intermuscular septum right the anterior intermuscular septum is from the fibula that to anterior border of fibula to the deep fascia whereas posterior intermuscular septum extends from the fibula to the deep fascia so now the compartment which is present between the tibia muscle and the anterior intermuscular septum is the anterior compartment. So this anterior compartment has such it contains many four muscles because this cross section is taken as a little above that is in the upper half as a result the fourth muscle is not seen. So this is tibialis anterior muscle and this is flexor digitorum it is extensor sorry extensor digitorum longus extensor hallucis longus right let us now write the divisions here anterior compartment is again divided into three parts by one is muscle then nerves then arteries muscles are mainly four muscles one is tibialis anterior other is extensor hallucis longus other is extensor digitorum longus other is Peroneus tertius. The nerve is anterior tibial nerve. This anterior tibial nerve can be seen here, whereas the artery is anterior tibial artery. This are this is the anterior tibial artery. Now let us learn each and every muscle in detail. So the first muscle that you will be learning here is Tibialis anterior. So this is tibialis anterior. So let's come to the origins and insertions of tibialis anterior. Right. The origin of tibialis anterior is from the middle tibialis anterior, right? Okay. Upper two third of lateral surface of fibula. Upper two third of lateral surface of fibula is the origin of tibialis anterior and where does it insert it is inserted into medial cuneiform and the adjoining part of first metatarsal okay origin is from the upper two-third of lateral surface of shaft of fibula and it is inserted into the medial cuneiform and up first base of first metatarsal so the muscle runs like this if you see the muscle it runs like this and it is inserted into there right this is tibialis anterior what are the actions first the nerve supply of tibialis anterior is simple it is anterior tibial nerve and what is the action so whenever this contracts it is like this so whenever it contracts this part of this metatarsals move like this right this metatarsal move like this that is called as dorsiflexion of the ankle Okay, dorsiflexion of ankle is the main function of tibialis anterior. It helps in dorsiflexion of the ankle. And now, that is the tibialis anterior. Next muscle is 
sorry it is extensor this is extensor compartment so extensor digitorum okay now let's deal with hallucis first hallucis longus extensor hallucis longus origin of extensor hallucis longus occurs from middle to fourth of medial surface of shaft of fibula it's like this here it is medial surface of shaft of fibula it is lateral surface right and then fibula that too and it is inserted into the base of greater phalanx i mean base of distal phalanx of toe base of distal phalanx of hallux or toe so how does the muscle run the muscle runs like this and here it forms the tendon the tendon runs like this and is inserted here right this is extensor hallucis longus it takes its origin from middle to fourth of medial surface of shaft of fibula and it is inserted into the base of the distal phalanx of hallux or big great toe or big toe right and what is its nerve supply nerve supply is anterior tibial nerve and what is its action so whenever it moves like this this moves above so it helps in the extension of the phalanges of big toe helps in extension of big toe right this is extensor hallucis longus the, the third muscle which you will be learning here is extensor digitorum longus extensor digitorum longus extensor digitorum longus takes its origin from tibia flex extensor hallucis longus takes its origin from fibula whereas extensor digitorum longus it takes its origin from the tibia extensor digitorum longus is from the lateral condyle of tibia first and upper three fourths of medial surface of tibia this is lateral condyle of tibia and upper three fourths of medial surface of tibia so it takes its origin from tibia and insertion now as the muscle runs it again divides into four slips that is lateral four slips and then it is inserted into the distal phalanx of the four toes so it runs like this and here in the middle it forms tendons four tendons and each tendon runs through the each phalanx and is inserted into the bases of middle and distal phalanx where bases of middle and distal phalanx like this this is extensor retina extensor digitorum longus muscle right uh, it takes its origin from the lateral condyle of tibia and upper three fourth of medial surface of tibia and it is inserted into the bases of middle and distal phalanx of the lateral four toes and now whenever it contracts so it helps in the extension of the phalanges that is extensor digitorum longus now peroneus tertius peroneus tertius takes its origin from the lower surface of medial medial part of the fibula lower so lower lower one fourth of medial surface of fibula or else lower one fourth of medial surface of fibula and where is it inserted it is inserted into the fifth metatarsal bone is here here now does it go it runs like this so it is the smallest muscle so when you take the cross section here then you can see peroneus tertius if you take a cross section here or here you can see the peroneus tertius so that is the reason why in the first picture you can you can't see the peroneus tertius 
so it is again by anterior tibial nerve and it helps in the extension of the or dorsiflexion of the ankle mainly so this is what what is it it is peroneus tertius right and now the artery and the nerve supply the artery that you will be seeing here is the anterior tibial artery which artery anterior tibial artery so let us see the course and everything of the anterior tibial artery right the anterior tibial artery is the main artery of the anterior compartment of the leg what does it do it is uh, where does it takes its origin first of all it takes its origin from the popliteal artery in the pop under the lower border of popliteus muscle popliteus muscle has you see it is a posterior compartment muscle so from i mean it is it takes its origin at the popliteal fossa uh, below the popliteus muscle and then it enters the anterior compartment by passing between the two heads of tibialis posterior posteriorly there will be tibialis posterior by passing between the two heads of tibialis posterior it enters the posterior compartment see if you just remember so popliteus muscle will be somewhat like this right below the lower border of popliteus this is posterior tibial artery and this is anterior tibial artery this anterior tibial artery now it pierces the two heads of what do we say what is that tibialis posterior it takes it pierces the two heads of tibialis posterior and then it enters the anterior compartment right in the anterior compartment it enters in the anterior compartment and then here it runs vertically downwards like this it turns vertically downwards and it reaches the midway between medial and lateral malleolus i uh, mainly um, let me draw this again so my mistake so this is fibula this is tibia right and now it runs downwards it enters the anterior compartment by passing between the two heads of tibialis posterior and then it runs downwards on the tibia and then it runs downwards like this and then here it gives a branch that is dorsalis pedis artery it continues has dorsalis pedis artery and thus it help it uh, See, it runs downwards, and then it continues as dorsalis pedis artery. Okay, this is tibialis anterior. Relations are in the upper one third. It is between tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus. Tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus. In between them, it is there in the upper one third. It is here. In the middle one third. it is between again between tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis longus that is it is between tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis longus that is in the middle one third in the lower one third it is between extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus extensor hallucis longus will be superior and extensor digitorum longus will be inferior so it will be like this extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus this is what the relations so first in the upper one third it is between tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus in the middle one third it is between tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis longus in the lower one third it is between extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus now what are the branches it gives two branches anterior tibial recurrent and posterior tibial recurrent and it gives muscular branches to all the muscles here anyway it gives anterior and posterior malleolar branches anterior med sorry anterior medial malleolar and anterior lateral malleolar branches 
and to the deep peroneal nerve the deep peroneal nerve or anterior tibial nerve it is the continuation or the one of the terminal branch of common peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve gives two branches superficial peroneal nerve or musculocutaneous nerve which is a nerve of lateral compartment and deep peroneal nerve or anterior tibial nerve which is a nerve of anterior compartment so now this first it begins on the lateral side of the fibula this is medial this is lateral so first it begins at the neck of the fibula lateral side and then it runs downwards and then it enters the first it, it is in the posterior in the lateral compartment first along with peroneus longus and then it enters the anterior compartment by piercing the anterior intermuscular septum see first it will be in the lateral compartment here and then by piercing this anterior intermuscular septum it enters the anterior compartment and then in the anterior compartment it lies lateral to the tibialis anterior to for some distance and then it lies over the tibialis anterior in the middle one third and then it again passes to the lateral and then it runs lateral to the tibialis anterior in the lower one third so this nerve hesitates to go from lateral to medial side so this is called as nervous hesitance the branches are it gives muscular branches to all the muscles and even cutaneous branch to the first digital cleft so this is deep peroneal artery deep peroneal nerve or anterior tibial nerve okay then